Johnny Rab is one of the coolest cats you could ever meet. He's got endless stories, and they all are so very interesting, especially for many of us who may have not even been alive yet when his stories began. Johnny Rab is a true hero to our music scene, and we are so very honored to have him as a part of our 2024 Listen Up Awards Hero Class. Johnny Rob, thank you for having me come over to your museum. Very, thank you, Rob. very nice. Uh, wow, you got a lot of cool stuff here. Uh, it seems to me like you've you've lived a great life, and uh, I'm jealous, actually. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so just for the people that you know don't know the abridged version of you know your history and music, right? Um, that's where you would uh, tell us. Um, you what know, I remember. Yeah, what you remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did it? How did it all begin? Well, I grew up in with three older brothers, mm -hmm. and Elvis was a thing. You know, I was only like seven or eight. You know, whatever it was when he was on Sullivan and that that stuff. So I kind of fell for him. And uh, my oldest brother was the guy in the family that collected records, my brother Lenny. And, and he bought records. He had the, the uh, turntable, you know. And, uh, you know, I just got it from there. And then, boom, the Beatles come out. So I have to make the big decision. I'm yeah. going to make the switch over. Right. And for a long time, I didn't. But then, the you know, this movie's got impossible to watch. Songs were awful. And, you know, there was, uh, you know, She Loves You, I Want to Hold Your Hand, and blah, 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 blah. I mean, I never stopped listening to Elvis, but I reverted more to the rockabilly stuff, mm -hmm. which I didn't have. My brother never had any of that stuff. He had, like, the... Uh, late 50s, you know, right. those couple, several albums right before he went into the army. And uh, so that's what I got hooked up on. And then a friend of mine that I was going to school with, right across the street actually, St. Anne's, his name was Joseph Oy, and we were really good friends. And one day we went over to J.M. Fields on our lunch break from the school, which is right there, mm -hmm. and he bought Beetle Wigs. No kidding. <laughs> Brought the Beatle wigs, came home, you know, he ended up getting the guitar, uh, and he was learning it, you know, and started to pick up things here and there, and all of a sudden we had a little, we had a little group together, and uh, called The Count Five. You know, The Count Five was the Oh, we were the count four. The count four. <laughs> count, the count four. five was a, they had a hit. Oh, okay. All right, I forget what it was. <laughs> and uh, so we did that for a long time. Then you know, music changed again, once again, and it started to get trippy and all of this stuff. And so we we became the Blue Peaks. Okay. With uh, some b different members, and we played. We did that a long time. Joined the union, you know, mm -hmm. and put, you played all the local club, clubs. Um, now, what what a uh, time frame? What a uh, what years are we looking at? Okay, that would be like sixty, say sixty six to seventy five. Okay. Right. Yeah. No, seventy four. Okay. Well, because uh, I went to Hudson Valley for three years, and then to Brockport in 71, 72, 73. Hmm. Wow. And played with bands out there in Rochester, you know, that area. Seems like rock and roll tends to keep people young, because, uh, you know, you don't, you don't seem like uh, you're even old enough to have been playing back then. Oh, I'm not. You know what I mean? This is all a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, it's like the fountain of youth. Yeah. Yeah, and you're still still rocking and rolling today. 
Yeah, not as much as used to, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we just did like three, well, we were playing Saturday up at the uh, Wine and Skill. Okay. Uh, VFW, uh, or, or not, I'm sorry, the Allegiant Post up in Wine and Skill. Oh, yeah. We've been doing that the ba past bunch of years, except for the COVID year. Yeah, that dreaded year. Yeah. Never mention that again. <laughs> But uh, no, nah, man, it's just uh, it's, it's exciting uh, for me, I think, to come here and just see all this stuff. And, you know, I, I know you got tons more. I do. So you're wearing the, the Warriors shirt, and uh, Frankie uh, from Earth Films noticed it right away. But uh, you actually had a track on the soundtrack. I was on a track. You were on a track to it the Warriors. It was called In Havana. Okay. They were recording the soundtrack at um, Los Angeles at Artie Rip's studio. Actually, uh, I think it recorded at more than one studio, but we did the vocals on this one song at Artie's studio, which was in Hollywood or uh, West Hollywood. And uh, um, so we just went in and do, you know, have you ever been? Have you ever been to a banner? You know, that's yeah, a whole yeah. song built around that, right? Nice. And uh, and then it came out. You really didn't hear anything. You know, you could pay your uh, fee. Right. Union fee, whatever. And then uh, when the movie came out, the first time I saw it, we went and uh, found the scene and it's, the, the Warriors are, I think they're on their way to the park, mm -hmm. to the big confrontation. Oh yeah. Right? And so they stop in this little mom and pop store and they probably steal some stuff and harass them. Mm -hmm. You know, the owner, the old family, you know, type of thing. And on the radio, in the back, is, is in Havana. Wow. Hardly, yeah, you have to strain to listen. Gotcha. But gotcha. that's where it But it's is. there. It's there. It is. And so you get credit for it. You get a writer's, not a writer's credit, but a performance credit for it, you know. Wow. Hey, that's... That's kind of neat. That's neat to have on your resume for sure. Um, I mean, so you've been doing it since before I was even born. And... Um, I can imagine you just got a million different stories. Uh, there's a photo right here, Bo Diddley. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was just called up. He's like, "Yo, I need your help." <laughs> well, he didn't call me, but the RPI That's the way student, I tell it. <laughs> the students called us. The students called us. Uh, student body, whatever. Yeah. yeah, that was that was a real trip, man. And you know, it's funny because basically everybody here was in the band. Mm-hmm. But Terry wasn't, right? So his brother, uh, Don, said, hey, Terry, uh, we're going to do a show with Bo Diddley. And Terry said immediately, i got to play piano. And because uh, he knew it, you know, he knew those Johnny Johnson, right. or whoever was playing the piano, not Johnny Johnson, but, uh, and it was great, you know, I mean, to yeah. have him up there. It's like having one of the Beatles up there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course. It, it really is. I mean, that's that's legendary. So that, I can imagine, has to be one of the highlights Absolutely. of uh, your music career. This right here um, has to be one of your highlights of your music career, too. I um, <laughs> just watched a, a video of you guys um, and these lovely ladies are on there dancing uh, with you, and I can't get that out of my head. <laughs> Right. I've always thought you were cool. <laughs> I mean, you wear those shades around town. I run into you sometimes. You don't even recognize me. You're too cool. <laughs> no, I hope not. <laughs> but, um, ah, man. No, you definitely got the, the, the style that uh, I, I don't think um, a lot of people have. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go through. I, I wore this shirt thinking maybe it would be something that that you would wear. Um, I think so. I'd wear that. Let me try that. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I think Art just found his new dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait till the camera's off. I don't want you having to. Oh, all right, all right. 
<laughs> representing. What did uh, you say? Uh, RadioRadioX.com. Oh, where's my shirt? Yeah, right? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, any uh, particular highlights or anything that, you know, come to mind? Uh, any great wow. stories or anything? Yeah. That... Yep, quite a few of them, but... Uh, um, well, hooking up with Eddie was... Well, no, that's not true. Or was it? Um, no, hooking up with Eddie, who had a mutual friend, uh, we, we developed a really good rapport, and he knew all the Scotty Moore stuff, and I knew all the lyrics, so we could get together and do something like that, which is what we ended up doing. Hmm. And so, majorly inspirational to me, because I never heard a guitar player that hardly even knew who Scotty Moore was, right. let alone how to play it, you know. Mm -hmm. There still aren't very many. And uh, so he would, I, could, I can't say enough about him, but then uh, the next, I, I would say big inspiration would be Bert Summer, uh, who I met in, Rock, in Brockport, ended up moving to uh, Los Angeles and doing his album. Hmm. I should show you. I will. Um, and uh, the, the, we got signed by uh, Capital, but it was the wrong time. Uh, uh, yeah. Ronnie, Ronnie Dante produced it. Barry Manilow's producer, the Archies. He is the. Oh, Archie. really? He is the Archie. Oh, okay, all right. That was all the studio, right? Making records. Right. And uh, but I just think he he tried to make him sound like Barry Manilow. Not that he tried to make them sound like Barry Mandela, but he recorded them in that vein. He had great players. Uh, Will Lee, Paul Schaefer was a musical director. Really? Will Lee on bass. Uh, I just think it's so cool, man. I mean, and see Paul Schaefer's name on there, too. I, know, I mean, right? that's, that's, that's freaking dope. And that's back when smoking was cool. Yes. And this, this is Bert's first album. And let, you know, he was the lead in hair, mm -hmm. first paying gig, Woodstock. Really? Now, he was right in the heat of it, right in the middle of it. He got left off the film, hmm. which was contact contractual things. Because uh, he was on Capitol, and I think Warner Brothers had the rights to the film and the, you know, the soundtrack mm -hmm. and everything. Anyway, he got screwed out of it. And, you know, kept going, then moved back. And then I told Bert, you know, there wasn't anything happening for him in L.A. at that time. I said, Bert, you, you should go to Albany area. I mean, there's plenty of work for soloists, and right. you, know, you could throw something together, blah, 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 blah. So he did, and this is a picture of, they're called the Poor Boys, and that's in the window at 288 Lark. Oh, yeah. And that's Eddie Angel, myself, and Bert. That's cool. 288 mm. Lark, man. That was a place I've heard a lot about. And I was just not, well, you're gonna not old enough to, yet. You're going to talk to the yeah, to the grand dame of that. We sure are. Wow. That's great. Yeah, so... So you got a lot of memories, but you're still creating them. Um, still trying, yeah. Um, Still writing? Yeah, not a ton. No. But some. Uh, it's just hard to get together with people to do stuff because everybody's busy. All the people that I work with sure. are playing. <laughs> oh, right, right, that makes sense. So when I put a gig together, I have to make sure that everybody's available, you know? Yeah. And because everybody that I work with has their own venture as mm -hmm. well. That's their priority. Um, but you know, so far so good. Yeah. Again, it's not you know we're not playing that much, you know. But but, but you're still doing it. I love that. You yeah. Keep, keep that going. So but th this was cool. Um, we've done several uh, tours and festivals in Spain, Italy, and whatever. Um, and this is you know we ended up showing up at the club, and they come up with that. You know, poster, mm. 
which I, yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be me, but it is. I think it's an awesome Yeah, that, that's definitely awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't have to be you, but good thing it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Gula Gogo. Several years ago, in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, that is where the Capitol Theater is. Hmm. That's where they recorded, filmed, the Blob. Really? Yeah. No kidding. You saw it? You seen it? It's been a while, but yes. When they run out of the theater, you know, the blob mm -hmm. comes through the screen, you know, they have a cere ceremonial run out of the theater, you know, and they put a whole little festival around it. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, and so we got hired, um, and uh, we played in the theater. Then they showed the blob. The next day we played outside street theater, hmm. and it was gas, man. Yeah, that sounds very cool. Yeah, it, it very much was that. Anyway, that's it, that's he, from there. Eddie had these stone guitars made. Oh wow! For the band. So those are like two of a kind, one of a kind. No, they're both. Yeah. The bass and yeah. one, one lead guitar, you know. Wow. That's that's um. Hmm. It's a nice family photo, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate your time. Um, hey, this has been awesome. We definitely got to hang out more. Anytime, I mean, man. You come over. My house has a lot of live, laugh, love stuff. My wife's very creative, but um, yeah, we'll hang out here. <laughs>